Without further ado, I give the floor to my distinguished colleagues in um, Rome, uh, Major Christian Benediamo and uh, Major Nadir Ratsendi. Thank you again for organizing this activity. The floor over to you to start this first session. Thank you, sir. Authorities, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm uh, Major Christian Benediamo, cardiac surgeon from uh, Military Hospital in Rome. Uh, welcome to the web meeting, uh, the military hospital contributions in support of the national health system. First of all, uh, I give uh, all participants uh, uh, sincere regards uh, from our general director, Lieutenant General uh, uh, Giacomo Mamana, who uh, apologizes of not being present uh, um, uh, with us uh, due to a contemporary appointment. I would also uh, deeply thank uh, um, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Vastamidis uh, for having given us uh, this great opportunity. This event was uh, organized by uh, General Director of Joint Military Medical Services in uh, close coordination with the uh, Polyclinic Military Children in Rome. We are uh, pleased and uh, honored uh, to host this, uh, this year uh, in Iho meeting in uh, Rome, uh, virtually, uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic. And together with uh, Major Nadir Rashbi, anesthesiologist uh, and uh, uh, intensivist from Celio, will uh, moderate the meeting, uh, whose aim is to share the Italian experience in the fight against pandemic, in order to foster cooperation among uh, military hospitals in the field of military and humanitarian medical services. The invited speakers are experts from uh, um, the Italian military scientific community, who will share their uh, experience in the healthcare management of the pandemic emergency, and uh, I would greatly thank them for their support to this uh, initiative. Uh, the speakers will uh, illustrate the logistical challenges faced by the military hospital and the future intervention strategies in support to the civilian institutions for the emergency in progress. During the pandemic, the Celio military polyclinic faced uh, important structural and uh, functional changes, became, uh, becoming uh, a point of reference for both civilian and uh, military patients affected by COVID-19. Its uh, healthcare personnel has been deploying uh, uh, over uh, the Italian territory to support the civilian institutions. It is always providing uh, personnel to support the uh, Italian missions in the, the world. And uh, it uh, became recently one of the most important uh, COVID uh, hospital in the center of Italy. I'd like to take a moment to greet uh, all uh, military colleagues uh, facing COVID-19 uh, COVID in, uh, in Italy and uh, abroad, together with the uh, colleagues of the uh, Hino nations who are now connecting with us. All the intervention uh, uh, will be in English language. Uh, every intervention is scheduled to last uh, 15 minutes and uh, it is followed by a uh, five minutes question time. During uh, the intervention, attendees can uh, ask their question by writing them inside the chat box. They will be collecting and discussed uh, during the, the question time. Uh, I would also invite all participants to mute the microphone. Uh, I wish you enjoy uh, the meeting. And now, um, before starting, uh, uh, we have uh, a little video contribution uh, for you. Please, Jana. If you can launch the video, come on. Can we launch the video, Colonel? Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, sir. Okay. Yes, we will start with a small video. Sorry.
it is a, a contribution uh, not only for uh, uh, Italian uh, health personnel, but uh, uh, also for uh, uh, all, uh, all, uh, all people uh, who are uh, fighting uh, COVID-19 in this moment, especially for those uh, who have uh, lost uh, his life for uh, this uh, uh, fight. Um, before starting, uh, uh, we, we would launch uh, a survey to the attendees uh, uh, who wants to can uh, participate uh, just uh, going to the website uh, mens.com uh, and uh, insert the code uh, you see uh, inside the chat box. Uh, we, uh, if you, if I can uh, uh, have the uh, the screen uh, share the control of the screen, I can uh, uh, show you the uh, survey panel. Okay. Uh, first of all, you should uh, indicate uh, uh, your country, and then uh, you can uh, answer the first question with. Uh, this one indicates the highest priority in your country to stop coronavirus spreading, waiting for the vaccine. And uh, the other uh, survey with uh, another code uh, is uh, uh, how do you rank the following interventions by the Midway Health System to support nations in fighting COVID 19 pandemic? Your uh, opinion is uh, very important for us. It is an experiment, so uh, we hope you can. Uh, uh, join us and uh, now uh, we approach the main body of the of the okay uh, we now approach the main body of the meeting uh, during uh, the first wave of pandemic uh, in March North and Italy had to face uh, an uh, overwhelming amount of uh, infected people and uh, hospitals were transformed uh, quickly into COVID hospitals the Italian Ministry of Defense decided, decided to send military doctors and nurses to support civilian uh, hospitals and the uh, PHC system. And uh, Major Nadir Rajbi, uh, anesthesiologist and uh, intensivist from Celio, was deployed at uh, uh, the epicenter of the pandemic and uh, will share uh, with us his experience. Please, Nadir, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Christian. Thank you very much, Colonel. Uh, Valsimidis, and I thank you all the distinguished colleagues that are today with us, also our friends from overseas operations. Uh, I want to underline that also Christian was with me in North Italy in this uh, winter. So, uh, my experience started in, uh, uh, in Rwanda, but uh, there is a first item that I would uh, underline with you because every time I speak with uh, civilians colleagues, uh, they, uh, they, they tell me why physician, uh, uh, military physicians are sent in all these uh, areas. Well, our um, core business usually is the damage control management or better, uh, the remote damage control management in a, a hostile environment. This is due to our normal education as uh, you are better aware than me. So it, it, it gives us uh, uh, an increased skills. It gives us to be flexible and uh, in order to that, to be dispatchable with a short notice. That maybe sometimes uh, our family are not very happy about this last item, but it's always our life. And uh, so uh, uh, in the first days of February, uh, uh, our government decided to evacuate our Italian citizens from China from one. Later, a coral author will speak uh, deeply about this uh, uh, um, incredible activity. I will only to underline that it was a very effective joint and interagency operation because uh, the Minister of Defense, uh, the Internal Def uh, Ministry, 
the civil protection, we were all working for a unique aim and objective. Uh, I would like to share with you my feeling when I was there in Rwanda. It was all strange. A huge airport all shut down. Only one terminal was open. And uh, it was uh, something, it was a measure that was uh, going as something really big in China. And uh, we have to think that was not then one year ago. Uh, what the first thing that I had uh, about our field experience that th this COVID pandemic and maybe all the pandemics are a, a challenge for the modern health system. There is a, not a tsunami because tsunami is once. We have waves, waves of patients, and it was a really big challenge to the, uh, our bed availability. We were not ready to receive such amount of patients in a not in a, in a very uh, uh, strict period of time. So uh, maybe from our side to be military, we have some uh, knowledge more than our colleagues in the civilian side. Uh, we have the planning in our head, the planning uh, uh, model. So before to start something, we try to understand what, what we have to face before, during and after. And something that uh, was uh, really important for us it was to give, uh, to receive and to understand the local over picture and to understand the day of supplies about, for example, the, um, the DPE that were strategic at the moment that we started our uh, activity in North Italy. Uh, the first thing was to be safe in order to accomplish the mission. So we, uh, how, what was our behavior? You have to understand that they sent us in a hospital in North Italy. Uh, we were along there with our uh, civilian colleagues that they were fighting since days. They were tired. Uh, uh, they were stressed. And so we started with the model, a cloistered life. So even we were negative for COVID, we started from home that we, are, we were obviously negative. Even among us, we tried to, um, to uh, follow a self-isolation. We were eating alone. We were conducting only every activity with masks. Even, uh, I repeat, even we were tested before. Even we were uh, used uh, in a very obsessive way, uh, our DPE, but we um, understand that in that moment was very important not to be ill, not only for our safety, but because we were there to serve the nation and to, and to uh, aim an objective that was to help our civilian friends and the population. And for example, uh, uh, as you well uh, um, aware, in the military uh, world, uh, we have a lot of uh, um, education about the CBRN uh, uh, procedures. Um, that's something that in the civilian world is not very stressed as, as usual and it's normal. So uh, we decided not to say to our colleagues, hey, my friend, we have to do this, this and this because they, they, were, uh, they were fighting a really battle, they were stressed, they were tired. So we started to have a decontamination path when we um, were going to finish our duty in, in the hospital. and. Uh, we try to uh, let them look at us, uh, and our civilian colleagues understood that maybe that was that that uh, there was something that they had to change in their behavior. And I'm speaking about uh, the DP use and also in the contamination path. And in this way, they ask us uh, to reorganize their internal procedures. So. They, I think that it was very important that uh, uh, we didn't suggest anything. They looked at us and they asked us soon to reorganize something. So, so that was a very uh, important objective that we had in a few days. Then uh, we uh, organized the PPE standardization and the pre-triage structures. And uh, in, this mo in that moment, the pre-triage structures 
was not to identify the COVID positive people, but to identify the COVID negative people, not to let them to enter in our hospital that was focused, uh, was COVID dedicated. So we stop people negative before to let them um, uh, inside. Okay, so was, we changed a paradigm. So we improve the safety, um, safety of the personnel and of the patients and even also the population. Uh, there, uh, during the days, we had also very important activities about uh, liaison with the governmental uh, agency and also from uh, a very important hospital in Italy as uh, uh, the Spallanzano Hospital in Rome that is the leading hospital in Italy about infectious disease. And then uh, we, had, we were the highs of our government. We were in North Italy and we give every day, we were giving every day reports about the situation to let uh, our chain of command to be aware about all that was happening. Because at that time there, there was a very different sensitive, sensitivity be, between North Italy and the center and south of Italy. Really, it seems that we were in two different nations about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. So in this way, we uh, uh, improved our capability to have a tailored support. And about the lesson learned, it, it, it is a, an old slide, but I, I, I left there because uh, in April we had 145 uh, physicians, nurses, that had a bad, a bad impact with coronavirus. And due to uh, training, education, to understand how was the real uh, uh, PPEs uh, procedures, for example. And uh, uh, we had obviously another problem on the av availability about PPEs, uh, um, uh, items. I'm speaking about mass uh, protective uh, um, equipment. equipment and so on. More about lesson learned. Uh, our normal uh, muscle plan is effective in a train accident, in an air accident, uh, in something that happened once. So I have 100 or thousands of uh, casualties but the number is close. In this way, we have waves of people that were reaching the hospital or in the same condition with their respiratory distress. So we have to move to change our muscle plan concept. And maybe, and maybe uh, the modern health system that is focused and based on hospital care, maybe we have to change something because in pandemic, obviously, is not effective. And so, uh, we, uh, what we, we, we saw, we saw what I wrote here. People, people were scared, people with fever. They didn't want in February, March or April to come to hospital because they were scared to uh, become positive. So people spent 10, 15 days with high fever at home. And when they reach the hospital, the decalage was very quickly. And so we have a very, very complicated bilateral interstitial pneumonia with a complete prothrombosis state. And the outcome, obviously, was really bad. And all the people were uh, oxygen dependent or worse, dependent from the uh, positive uh, expiratory pressure. And so we understood that maybe we had to move forward the therapy, not only about the timing, but even also about the place. And so we, we think about uh, how is our normal operational uh, patient care pathway during uh, operation. We have 10 minutes, the platinum one, the golden hour, and uh, uh, for NATO, not beyond two hours, the damage uh, control uh, sergeant. So what we did, what we usually do in our operational activity, we try to be very close to our casualties. And so even in a pandemic, maybe, maybe we have to provide the front line. 
and is not important. It's important, yes, to find the, real, the, re, the, the right treatment, but it's also very important to try to understand the right timing, the right timing about our therapy, our activities we have to do with our patients. And way ahead, maybe we have to increase our joint collaboration, especially in what we used to say uh, in the civilian world, the warning and reporting. And I think that uh, uh, Colonel Van Samitis uh, will speak later about the new uh, app about COVID-19 tracing, but it's almost what uh, usually military uh, CBRN uh, unit uh, 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 do the warning and report activity. So, at the end of our first uh, um, deployment, we try to suggest something. Also, obviously, to remodel the hospital based healthcare. So, we have to understand that uh, the frontline, the uh, house based therapy, maybe could be something really effective in a pandemic situation. And I'm going to finish. Uh, remember that the staff motivation is something uh, really important. Personnel is the base of the healthcare. And uh, I dedicate this presentation, this slides to uh, our nurse that was with, that, uh, was with us uh, in North Italy. Unfortunately, uh, Benedetto, when uh, we came back from North Italy, suffered a heart attack, not depending from COVID-19. and. Uh, he left his, uh, his family, but I, I, I would have like that his motivation was brilliant and was uh, really a bulldozer with his colleagues, was really a, a, a very example. So I thank you all for your attention and uh, I thank you again, Colonel Vassamidis, for this great effort and all the colleagues uh, uh, that are today with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.